Welcome back to the course mechanics of solids. So, today we are going to start the new topic that is stresses due to bending. So, already you know what is bending and uh, uh, how uh, it affects uh, the, the cylinder member right. Already we have seen that uh, bending moment and shear force all those things how you can calculate over the whole span of the cylinder member. Now, we are uh, in this particular uh, chapter, we are going to uh, discuss the stresses developed due to bending. Now, first we will be talking about geometry and deformation of a symmetrical beam subjected to pure bending. Okay? Now, in this chapter if you look at, so we will be talking about the, in the slide you can see that we will be discussing moment curvature relationship for pure bending of beams with symmetric cross section, bending stress and shear stress. Okay? So, first we will be talking about, we will be concentrating on the bending stress determination and then we will be talking later on, we will be talking about shear stress determination. Now, first what we are talking about, we are going to uh, find out the geometry of deformation. Okay? So, due to bending, okay, when, when the slender member uh, is the action of bending moment okay, when it bends. right? So, at that time what kind of say deformation and how the geometry of the deformation uh, is uh, uh, taken place. Okay. So, of a symmetrical beam subjected to pure bending. Now, what is this word pure bending? So, pure bending is nothing but a beam which transmits a constant bending moment is uh, said to be in pure bending. Okay. That means, there is no shear force. So, it, it might happen, right. So, if you consider a continue, I mean a, a, a slender member, a beam, right, uh, which is subjected to the bending moment in such a way that you have the constant bending moment throughout the span without any shear force. Okay? The shear force is completely 0, uh, that kind of situation uh, might happen uh, in the beam and under that situation we are going to find out or we are going to analyze the system. Uh, for uh, stresses and deformation. Okay? So, now since our originally straight, so originally straight beam, so you know that originally straight beam, so this is your say beam, so originally straight beam okay? and after deformation or after bending it will take the shape like that. Okay? So, originally straight beam is now becoming the curved one is not it. Now, after deformation it takes the curved shape. Now, therefore, it is useful uh, preliminary step to introduce the concept of curvature, because as because this, that curvature will try to define the deformed shape of the beam. Okay? So, let us talk about uh, the curvature first. So, what do you mean by curvature of a curve? So, as you know from your mathematics that a that the curvature of a plane curve is defined as the rate of change of the slope angle of the curve with respect to distance along the curve. Okay? So, this is the definition, proper definition of the curvature of a curve. The curvature of a plane curve is defined as the rate of change of the slope angle of the curve with respect to the distance along the curve. Okay? Very simple definition. Now, if you look at this plane curve, say A, B, C, D is a plane curve. Okay. So, A, B, 
C D. So, that means, this is one plane curve okay. and whose curvature is actually in x y plane. Okay. This is the plane curve and the curvature is in the x y plane and this b at this is this uh, the normal to the curve at point b and normal to the curve at point c they are intersecting at say point o prime so understood so normal at point b on the curve and normal at point c on the curve they are intersecting at say point o prime okay now this the change in the slope angle the change in the slope angle between b and c between this point and this point is nothing but say this is your delta phi that is the change in the slope angle between b and c because at each and every point i mean this curve is showing you that at each and every point your slope is changing so the change in slope between b and c is a delta phi so when delta phi is very small right at that time the arc delta s okay can be written as o prime b that is the radius of the curvature multiplied by delta phi can i write that so delta s is equal to o prime b into delta phi as delta is delta phi is if delta phi is small right so that is the condition so if delta phi is small the arc delta s is approximately okay is equal to o prime b into delta phi so what we can write now we can write as delta s tends to zero okay the curvature at point B is defined as your d phi d s because that is the definition that means is defined as the rate of change of the slope angle of the curve with respect to the distance along the curve. So, d phi d s is your uh, curvature which can be written as limit del s tends to 0 delta phi delta s okay, agreed. So, that can be further written as as delta phi is very small. So, we can write down this thing as delta phi o prime b into delta phi. So, limit delta s tends to 0. Okay. We can write that. So, this can be further written as limit delta s tends to 0, this is O prime p and this can be written as 1 by rho, where rho is equal to O prime b is the radius of curvature at point B. Okay. So, your the definition of curvature is nothing but 1 by rho. So, 1 by rho, rho means the radius of curvature, right. So, that we have got here. So, that this expression will be frequently used to define the stress due to bending. That is why we are doing this exercise. So, that some recapitulation also will happen and at the same time you will, you will appreciate that this, this 1 by rho term will be frequently used because the plane beam is now taking. So, this, this was the beam before bending and after bending it is taking, it is taking the shape of some curve. So, therefore, radius of curvature is very, very say uh, uh, important parameter okay, to define the deformation due to bending. 
Okay. So, now it can be shown, it can be uh, proved also, it can be shown uh, due to I mean by following the symmetry argument, it can be shown that in pure bending, okay, in a plane of symmetry, the plane cross sections okay, remain plane even after deformation. Okay, so, you are starting with some plane cross section and in the plane of symmetry basically that, that plane cross section will be remaining plane even after deformation. So, that can be shown. So, well, so now basically if you look at the deformed shape of the beam due to pure bending that means, I have the beam like that. Okay and say this is my deformed beam okay, which is taking the circular arc okay, fine and this is under the action of bending moment m b because this is pure bending. So, only bending moment okay, constant. Now, if you look at this top fiber of the beam, okay, it is getting shortened is not it this concave because as you know this is I am, I am showing the positive bending moment. So, the top fiber will be experiencing the compression that will be coming later on okay, because it is getting shortened. So, when it will get shortened? If you compress it, right. So, this fiber is basically getting shortened, right. Whereas, the bottom fiber of the beam is getting elongated. So, from this, at least we can. Uh, we can say something from our intuition that the top fiber should experience some compressive stress and the bottom fiber is uh, I mean is experiencing or should experience some tensile stress. So, whether that thing is coming from the analysis or not that will we are going to say. Okay. So, now if you if you say the bottom fiber is getting elongated and the top fiber is getting shortened, then there must be one line in the plane of symmetry okay, which has not changed in the length that and that line is known as the neutral axis understood. That means, if you move from bottom fiber to top fiber, okay, there must be some line in between which will not experience any kind of deformation, no elongation, no contraction, because I mean because you are you are you are traveling from the elongation to the shortening right or the contraction. So, there must be one line in between where you should not have any kind of deformation and that line is known as neutral axis. So, this is very very important in this discussion. Okay. So, this is your neural axis. Now, let us try to uh, uh, try to define the neural axis and now the location of the neural axis we do not know frankly speaking at this moment we will try to find out the location of the neural axis later on. But at this moment I mean from the discussion it is coming out that there must be one line where you will not get any kind of deformation and that line is neural axis it is completely neutral in, in terms of the deformation. So, if you look at this figure actually, so this is your neutral axis and this neutral axis is basically, so this is your bottom fiber, okay, this is your bottom fiber of the beam, this is your top fiber of the beam and this x axis we are saying the neural axis. But we are not we are not talking about the location because location we do not know. We are just saying that x axis is or we are we are forcefully we are making the x axis as the neutral axis that we are doing. 
Okay, and this is your plane of symmetry fine, this is your plane of symmetry. Okay. So, now we are considering two fibers, one is your i j okay, some distance above the neutral axis and one fiber say m n which is at the neutral axis, we are considering two fibers. Right. So, I mean before deformation basically i j is nothing but m n because there is no deformation. So, all the fibers are equal. So, i j is equal to m n because no deformation has happened. Now, after deformation if you see the deformed configuration. So, this is your deformed configuration. Okay. So, now here your earlier it was i j equal to m n right. Now, even we can say m n is nothing but equal to m 1 n 1 even after deformation because m n fiber lies in the neutral axis okay. and m n fiber because it is lying on the neutral axis. So, m n fiber should not experience any kind of deformation like with no elongation, no contraction. So, even after deformation you are getting m 1 n 1 right. So, that must be equal to i j and must be equal to m n, but at the same time your i j fiber will be experiencing some deformation and because neutral axis is not experiencing the deformation. So, anything above the neutral axis will be uh, experiencing the contraction and below the neutral axis it will be experiencing the elongation right, because you are crossing from elongation or you are traveling from elongation to the contraction zone. So, therefore, I 1 j 1 okay, this fiber is getting compressed or the contraction or the shortening is happening in this fiber. right? So, if I define the radius of the this is this is a circular curve right. So, this arc is circular okay, because it is a pure bending case. So, it will it will take the circular shape because it is everything is symmetry. Okay. So, the radius of the curvature is a rho fine and this fiber i 1 i j or i 1 j 1 is lying at some rho minus y distance okay, from the center. So, this is the center of the arc fine. So, this is this distance is say y that is given here okay. fine. So, what I can write epsilon x equal to and this is this is happening this contraction in i j fiber is happening in x direction. So, epsilon x can be written as epsilon x can be written as i 1 j 1 minus i j that is the difference in length okay, divided by the original length okay, that is happening in the i j fiber. Okay. So, that can be written as i 1 j 1 fine okay, minus m 1 n 1 because i j is equal to m 1 n 1 by m 1 n 1. I can write that. So, now if you look at the figure m 1 n 1 is nothing but rho into delta phi. So, rho is the radius of the curvature and delta phi is the angle made okay, that is the angle made at the center. Okay. So, I can write that and your i 1 j 1 in, in the similar argument we can write rho minus y that is the radius of curvature for that fiber okay, multiplied by delta phi. So, Therefore, your epsilon x can be written as rho minus y delta phi minus rho into delta phi by rho into delta phi. So, this is nothing but your minus y by rho, which so 
what is your y by 1 by rho? 1 by rho already we have seen that is d phi d s. So, I can write d phi d s into y. So, this is very very important relation okay? epsilon x is equal to minus y by rho. Okay. Now, this why this minus sign is coming into the picture? Because this indicates that there is a shortening above the neural axis as we, we are we are talking about right. This minus sign is basically indicating that you are getting a shortening above the neural axis. If you go below the neural axis, you will be getting plus sign that means elongation is happening. So, neutral axis is the point or the or the boundary between elongation elongated fiber and the shortened fiber okay, that is creating the boundary between these two. Okay. Now, we can conclude from the symmetry argument right. So, this is the elongation happening in the in the in the fibers. So, if I consider different fiber in the beam. So, each fiber will be experiencing some elongation or contraction depending on its position with respect to the neutral axis that is okay that we have got now. But from the symmetry argument because the beam will be bending symmetrically right the plane of symmetry is there and it will it should bend symmetrically because you have the constant bending moment throughout the beam. So, the symmetry arguments will require the plane sections to remain plane already we have discussed already we have decided right it can be shown also though I am not showing that thing, but any textbook you will see that plane section should remain plane by following the symmetry argument. The symmetry argument already we have seen in case of torsion if you recall right that was the symmetry argument and that is very very strong argument at least in mechanics. Okay. So, by following the symmetry argument I can simply write the shear stresses on that plane basically must be 0. Otherwise, you will not be satisfying your symmetry. By following symmetry argument, your gamma x y must be equal to gamma x z must be equal to 0. Okay. So, what you have got? You have got on x plane, normal strain you have got that is equal to minus y by rho. On x plane in y direction, shear strain is 0. And on x plane on in, in z direction that is gamma x z is also 0 to satisfy the symmetry condition. So, now, now if you if you recall your stress strain relation everything is within your elastic limit if you recall your stress strain relation for linear isotropic elastic beam. So, for this kind of beam your epsilon x can be written as 1 by e sigma x minus nu into sigma y plus sigma z okay, which is nothing but minus y by rho already we have got it just now we have derived gamma x y is equal to tau x y by g is equal to 0. Therefore, your shear stress is also must be 0 because the shear strain is 0. Okay. Similarly, gamma x z is equal to tau x z by g equal to 0. So, tau x z that is the shear stress on x z plane is also 0 to satisfy this 0 shear strain condition. Okay. So, the shear stress components tau x y and tau x z they must vanish in pure bending that is the I mean biggest say finding okay, from this discussion. So, only thing is that you will be, but still I do not know about sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. Okay. The norm I mean we cannot say anything about the normal stress, we'll, we have to we have to do little bit more say uh, uh, analysis to talk something about or to tell something about sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. But at this moment, only we can conclude that the shear, uh, shear stress tau x y and tau x z must vanish in pure bending. Okay? That is coming from these two equations. But from this equation, we cannot say anything about sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. So, we have to do little bit more exercise to tell something about these stress components. Okay? 
So, I will stop here today. So, in the next lecture, we will we'll discuss more about uh, uh, these things and there from there, we will try to find out these stress components. Okay? Because if you, if you know the stress components, then basically you can find out, I mean if you know the strain or if you know the stress, basically you can find out the actual deformation pattern and the stress developed due to bending. Okay? So, I will stop here. Thank you.